Welcome back to Charming Data, everybody. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on dash dynamic callbacks. Dynamic callbacks are also called pattern matching callbacks, and they allow the user much more flexibility and control over the graphs and web components inside the dashboards that we create for them. This is taking Dash to a whole new level. Dash dynamic callbacks allow you to create callbacks for every set of input and outputs that don't exist yet on the app. So right now this exists, but if I as a user am creating another graph and another graph, um, now with these set of inputs, the drop downs and the radio charts that feed into the output graph, in this case the bar chart or the line chart, this is an interactive um, uh, graphing components and you can only do this with dynamic callbacks because this did not exist originally these graph and these drop downs so this is what dynamic callbacks allows you to do it allows the user or for you to give your user a lot more flexibility and control over the apps so they can control uh, they can create as many graphs that they like and even remove them if you want with a different type of code it also shortens the code. So now you don't have to create a callback for each set of inputs and output graph. Now you can have like a hundred sets of inputs and outputs in one callback. So it's really a game changer. It's really convenient. And once you know it, um, it takes Dash to a whole new level. Um, the last thing that you can do with dynamic callbacks is on the Dash um, uh, documentation. You can actually create CRUD apps. CRUD apps are create, read, update, and delete apps that are used for um, uh, databases, uh, tracking uh, so product supply, maybe building a page of uh, comments and feedback, many different things, such as this one right here. This um, code right here is dynamic callback. You can create, um, uh, go home at, I don't know, uh, tasks you need to do for yourself at nine, add, and then you can also delete any ones that you want to delete, clear, done. This it can only be done with dash dynamic callbacks because these checkpoints, uh, checkboxes and text did not exist before or originally in the app. So in this tutorial, we are going to see how to create this uh, bar chart or this um, dynamic set of inputs and outputs that would allow us to create a line chart, a bar chart, a pie chart with these, these drop downs. And we are going to um, view the, use this um, documentation in Dash. Dash has great documentation. So open the link below the video. You'll have this link, you'll have the Excel sheet, and you'll have the code. So you can reproduce everything on your computer. And we're going to review these three selectors. The dynamic callbacks have three selectors, match, all, and all smaller. And we're going to review all three of them today. So you see how you can do this, and you can create your own app um, as many times as you want. All right, so uh, the Excel sheet we're going to use is this one below the link. Um, it's um, data on convicts or people under trial or the 10 news. I think these are considered political prisoners. I'm not sure in India by India by state name in India and by year from 2001 all the way to 2012 by gender and by caste. Um, so we'll download that under the video and the code. All right, so let's do this. Let's build this together. Um, if you just copy paste this code into your into your uh, Python IDE um, and you put everything in the same folder, you put this here, you put the cast.csv um, um, document, uh, Excel sheet into this same folder, dynamic callbacks or whatever folder you call it, you can actually run this and it should work the same way for you as well. So go ahead and try that um, and let's get started. All right, so make sure to download these, import these libraries because you need these libraries to um, make this um, app function, which is really pandas, numpy, um, plotly express, that's three libraries, and then dash, all right? All these three come within dash. So we're using dash version 1.13.1, but you can use uh, future versions uh, just as well. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, let's close this, we're going to read the Excel sheet into a pandas data frame. We're just going to change the columns na column names from this to this and from this to this. We're going to initiate the app, and then we're going to put in the layout. Now, the layout um, 
this is the big difference, right? In the layout in basic callbacks, you probably saw my video on introduction to Dash up here below on the top, right? Um, uh, you have to have all the, the components inside the layout before you actually um, introduce them in the, 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 the callbacks. So in this case, with this right here, if we wanted to have this app with basic callbacks, we would need to have here um, uh, DCC uh, graph, and we would need to have this uh, for the pie, and then we would have to create another one for the bar and another one for the line chart, and we would have to create different um, um, uh, drop. Where is it? Drop downs. Now we don't need any of that. Now all we need is just the layout with the button, right, right here, this button, and a div. An, an empty div, an empty section of the page where we're going to put all our um, graphs and components that the user is going to create. Okay, so everything is going to go inside the children of this div, an empty list of this div. All right, so we got the layout, and now we're going to go into the callback. Okay, so what are we going to do with this callback? This callback, I'm going to actually make this smaller right here. Just close this for now. This callback, we are going to uh, take the input of the end clicks. We'll take the end clicks of the add chart component ID. Add chart component ID is our button. All right. So we're going to take the end clicks of our button, which is right now it's zero. So this is the same thing as saying the first um, zero, right? But that's going to change. It's going to be one. It's going to be two. We're going to take that, and we're also going to take the state of the container children. Container is equal to the div. And the children is equal to an empty list. So right now, this is like an empty list. All right, this is like this. So we're going to take this state, we're going to take this input into the function, and then we're going to spit out something right here. We're going to return that is going to go inside the children of the container. So let me break this down for you. A few things. The difference between state and input. Input uh, means that if this end clicks is triggered um, or changes, then the whole callback is triggered, and then something happens. This function is triggered. Um, state means that it, it saves the information of the children when the callback is triggered or not triggered, but it does not trigger the callback. So if children change right here, which means the children of this div, if it changes, then it'll just save it into the callback, but it doesn't trigger the callback. That's the main difference. Okay, so we're taking these two. We're taking the input and, and clicks and the children, and we're going to call it and clicks and div children. You can call it whenever you want, but if you have two inputs and states, then you're obviously going to need two arguments inside this function. Call this function whatever you want. And then we're going to play around with the data here, and then we're going to spit something out into the same children container, the same div. So let's see, let's break this down. Let's see the function and what we do. Here, we're going to create a new variable called new, ch new child. And what is this new child? New child is going to, just going to be an HTML div, right? It's going to be an HTML div with many different children inside of it. Inside this children, let's open this back up again. We're going to have a graph and a radio item um, and all the drop downs. But we'll go into that for in, in there um, in one minute. Let's close this again. So all this HTML div and everything that's in it is going to go into a new child variable. And the new child, we're going to append this to the div children. What is the div children? The div children is right here, remember? And this refers to the state, which refers to this. This, as you can recall, equals to an empty list. So the first time. The first time this equals to an empty list because there's nothing in there. So div children is an empty list, just children is an empty list. So this is the same thing as saying empty list and append into the empty list this new child. So um, in essence, this, the result of this, is actually the new child. This is like saying HTML, div, and whatever, whoops, and whatever goes inside of here, right? Now, if, this is for every, this is for every click. Why for every click? Because that's why that's when the callback is triggered. When n clicks equals zero, which is the first time you load the page, this callback is going to be triggered and is going to return everything inside the children of this div, right? The second time, this uh, the, the the first time the button is clicked, then n clicks is going to equal one, and then you're going to have another child to append to this list. 
oops, div child. You're going to have another child to append to this list. So once the callback is clicked twice, the, the button is clicked twice, now you're going to have div children. This is the same. This is going to be equal to uh, HTML, a list of HTML div and another HTML div with all the things inside that we created for it. Okay, so every time you click a button, you're going to add an HTML div inside this list, which is the div children, which goes into the children of the container because that's the output. The output always is what re re the function returns is right here, which goes into here, your main section of the layout page. All right, so let's see what goes into the div children. Well, go sorry, what goes inside of here, this new child. The first time the app loads with zero clicks, um, this is going to be created a new child with a new a new div, sorry, with the children that contains a DCC graph, which is pretty much everything that you see on this page. Let's refresh. All right, so we see that we're going to have first a DCC graph right here, right, right there, and then we're going to have a radio items right below it. Right here we have radio items with three options: bar, line, chart. Three options here: bar, line, chart the automatic default value is going to be bar and then underneath that we're going to have three drop downs one two and three and let's just do the first one you'll get the other two on your own first one is going to be an option of all the the states unique names of the states as the option values and you can do multiple uh, choice here and the default values is going to be these states so that's why when you load the page the first time these are the default values Right? So this is a first graph and all the uh, um, web components that are going to go under the graph. All right? That's going to go inside this new child and append to this empty list. And now we have our first uh, set of inputs and outputs. But this is only, um, let's hashtag this out. This doesn't make it into active yet. This is just a set of inputs and outputs. So if I save this and I load the app, you'll see that it just creates a graph with inputs and outputs. So if I change this here, line or pi or state, it doesn't change anything because this is not interactive yet. This is just uh, a set of uh, drop downs, radio items and graph that go into this main uh, div into this page, right? So to make it interactive, we're gonna use this second callback. And actually, even before I go into this callback, the difference that we saw here is that ID, ID of each uh, component, the drop down and the radio item and the graph is different than in basic callbacks. You need this type of ID uh, in dynamic callbacks if you're going to use dynamic callbacks. So the difference is before an ID in basic callbacks was just this ID equals a string and we called it, let's say, container. Now, if you want to use dynamic callbacks, you have to use this type of idea where you have two sets of key values, a dictionary of key values. So we, here we have this key called type and you hear this key called index. And these are the values that we're given it. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it type, you can call it role, and you can call this whatever you want. Whatever you choose, just stick to it. So it's always the same and you don't get confused. So this first key value is going to be type and then the value is going to be dynamic graph. And the other, the second part of the idea is going to be index, and its value is going to be n clicks. And this is very important to remember. n clicks equals n clicks, which the first time equals zero that the page lo loads. The second time, once you click on the button, is going to be equal to one. So this I'm refreshing the page. So the first time the page loads, this is equal to n clicks equal to zero. The callback is triggered and this let's look at the graph this graph right here the ID is going to equal to dynamic graph and the end clicks is going to equal to zero this the first time I click on the button and clicks is going to be equal to one so this is this graph ID is going to be dynamic graph the same type but the end clicks is going to be equal to one so every time I add a new graph and clicks of the ID is going to equal plus one right one or two or three or four. Very important to remember for the callback below. We do the same thing for the radio items and the same thing for the drop downs. All right, so let's go back into where all the magic happens, which is in this callback right here, which is a dynamic, um, the dynamic part of, of this callback. Okay, 
So let's even um, close this definition for now because we don't need to see what's going on in there. What you want to focus is on this. So before you saw that in basic uh, callbacks, when you put inputs and outputs, they would each have a component ID and a component property, just like here above. Component ID is this one of the input, and component property is this. And it was always a string, right? The difference now is that the input is not a string anymore. It's a dictionary of uh, similar to the ID in the dynamic callback. The component ID is a dictionary of key of two key of two keys, keys and values. In this case, we are going to refer to uh, the type and the index that we used above. And then the, the component property is the value because it's going to be the value of this thing. Okay, so I'm going to show you this input and we're going to dissect this and break this down so you see what this input means. Because if you understand this input, then you'll understand all the rest. Uh, notice that here I did not put component ID. You can, do, you can write it this way or you can write an input without component ID and without component property this way. However you want to write it, this is just faster, but I'm doing this so it's easier for you to understand. Okay, so this input, um, we, what, hap what is happening here is it's saying that this callback is going to be triggered and this function is going to be triggered whenever the value of this input in this example of this component changes. Whenever the user changes the value of this component, the callback will be triggered. So what is this component? This component refers to the type dynamic dropdown S, which is right here, dynamic dropdown S. All right, I'm actually going to bring it down so it's easier for you to see. Let's put it down here. Okay, so this one is type dynamic dropdown S refers to this dropdown which is where all the unique state values, which is this one right here, right? Either this one or this one or this one or this one. We don't know yet. Oops, let's just add another one here. Um, so it's, it refers to uh, uh, this dropdown, but the index is going to be, we're going to match the index. So it depends on which dropdown you click and the value of which dropdown it clicks. If I'm clicking on this dropdown and changing this dropdown, xing or whatever I want to do with it, I'm referring, I'm referring to the dropdown that has index equals zero because this was the first um, dropdown that was created with the, when the dash loaded. If I'm clicking on this dropdown, this dropdown is exactly the same. It's a dynamic dropdown S. It has exactly the same type value. But the key index, the, the, the value of this index is not zero anymore. It's going to be equal to one, right? Because this is the first um, uh, time, this is the graph that was created, the dropdown that was created after I clicked on the button once, okay? So we're taking the value of this dropdown and the same thing with other values here, with other dropdowns and radio items. This is the radio item here and the value of it. And we're going to do something with it inside the, the function here. And then we're going to spit out a figure, right? A figure is a dictionary of, in this case, a plotly expressed bar or a dictionary of plotly expressed line. It's going to spit out this dictionary figure um, into the output here. Now, what is this output? This is the final, most important part of the dynamic callback match se selector. This output is the figure of this component ID. What is this component ID? Dynamic graphs. Let's go back and look at what this dynamic graphs is. Let me delete this. Dynamic graph type. Let's see where it says dynamic graph type. It's right here. It's a dynamic graph. And the index is n clicks. So the first time it's going to be zero. Index is going to be matched. So what this matches, it doesn't match necessarily the index of the graph. It matches the index of the input. So if I'm changing the dropdown where the index equals one, which was the second dropdown, if I'm changing the, the dropdown when the index equals one, then this is going to equal one as well. And it's going to change the graph where the type is dynamic uh, equals dynamic graph and the index equals one. If I'm changing the dropdown that equals two, that's after you click the button twice, then it's going to change the graph where the type equals dynamic graph and the index equals two, all right? So it does that automatically, and the beautiful thing about this is that 
you don't have to remember which which number it is on. You just put match here in the input and match in the output. And you can create a hundred different graphs and 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 uh, uh, drop downs and radio items just like on the one here with only one callback in Dash, which is so I think it's beautiful. So I'm excited to be teaching you this. All right. So we really got through the, the hard part, um, obviously because we have four inputs, we have four different uh, arguments inside the function update graph. I'm doing something here, I'm just filtering the data, uh, so I only have those states inside this new data frame, I'm making a copy of the data frame, always make a copy of the data frame inside the function. And then I'm just saying, if chart choice, what is chart choice? Chart choice is right here, which is equal to the last input, which is equal to the value of this component ID. This component ID equal is is actually the radio item above and it equals the, the index that it equals to. It might be the first radio ID or the second one or the third. Um, I don't know. So it's if the chart choice equals bar, because there's only three choices, there's bar, line, and pi. Bar, line, and pi. So if it equals bar, we're going to group like the, the data frame, we're going to uh, um, filter it a little bit more. Um, do a sum of all these values, and then we're going to build a plotly express bar chart with the data frame. An x value is going to be the category, categorical value, and the y axis is going to be the numerical value, which is the arguments of this function, which again, and remember, refers to the second and third inputs. Second and third inputs refers to these, the values right here from these drop downs. Okay? Right here. So we're taking that, we're building the, the, the graph, and then we're spitting out the figure inside the uh, output with the same index matching ID to the input themselves. We're doing the same thing with line. If we do a line, then, and then, um, then we're turning uh, something right here. And if we're doing pi, then we're turning this. We don't need to group by. We don't need to do anything with the data. We're just returning the pie chart right here. And this is how you get this beautiful, beautiful um, app where you can create as many, let's make this bigger, as many charts as you want, right? Let's create four charts here just so you have an example. And now the user can, let's say, do a line chart and another line chart right here, and the user can do a bar here and a pie here because I want to see different data. Sometimes one app is not enough or one graph is not enough. And in this, I want to see the comparison between states Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh, um, and the year in the a year would be the x-axis, convicts with the y-axis, and you see the difference of the number of convicts in each state. Maybe here I don't want to see difference between states. I just want to see Maharashtra. I'm probably saying it awfully bad. And I want to see the difference between caste. So now I can see four different castes in the Maharashtra uh, state of India and the number of convicts over the years. Maybe I want to see differently. Maybe I want to see a bar chart. So instead of convicts, maybe I want to see uh, detainees only in this state, which I'm not even going to try to say the name because I'm sure I will butcher it, or Assam, or I compare with other three different states. Oh, no, no uh, detainees in Chandigarh. Okay, and the last one is a pie, pie chart where I can see maybe the difference in gender inside the state of, let's do Bihar, right? So you see the male, female, only 2% of all the convicts there. So I just created four different uh, graphs with like eight different drop downs, everything with one callback, and I can create like a hundred different graphs if I want. So this is only possible through dynamic callbacks. All right, so we learned about the match. Let's see what all and all smaller do. I'm not going to show you a whole new app of how to do this because I don't want this video tutorial to be an hour and a half and lose half of you. So I'm just going to show you um, what it does inside the app, inside the code itself. If I choose right here, if I choose, we're going to print out the S value. So we're going to print out the first um, value of this um, component ID of this input. So let's say we put instead of match, we put all. Now the app is not going to work. This is just for um, um, tutorial purposes, just to show you what happens. So if I put all here, it's going to take, it's going to match the value of all the indexes. So if I have four different indexes, because I have four, I clicked on the button like three or four different times. So all the values from all four dropdowns are going to go into a list and they're going to be spit out here. So let's see. 
Let's see what that how that happens. Let's run the app. The first time we only have n clicks equals zero, so we only have one uh, value that's clicked inside this drop down, and that value is two states, right? Now, uh, whatever that name is, I don't want to butcher it, I'm sorry, and this second state. But let's say I am going to have uh, click the button right here. This graph doesn't work because it's built for match. It's not for this, it's for printing purposes. And now I want to choose another state. I want to choose awesome. So now I have three states. But this is um, for the second drop down. So now I have a list of two, a list of two lists, the first list and the second list. And if I create one more drop down, one more graph component, now I have, let's say I'm taking this out, taking this out, and I'm just going to put Bihar. And now if I put Bihar, you'll see the last thing, I'll have a list of three different um, values, right? Uh, the, the, from the first drop down, from the second drop down, and then for the third drop down. So this is what all does, all right? All smaller is very similar. The difference is that it takes everything minus the last index. So the first one will be zero. You'll have nothing there. Right, it's an empty list because it's minus one, so there's nothing. The second time, if I click on a on a chart, I'm not going to have this. Let's say I put here, awesome. I'm not going to have this value. I'm going to have the value over here because it's minus one. Right, it's not index one. It's index one minus one, which is index zero. So it's going to take from this drop down right here. Let's just put Maharashtra, and that's what it's supposed to print out. You see, it just prints out. Maharashtra, or the one that we just had a second ago. So that's the difference between all and all smaller. All small is exactly the same thing. It's a list of values, like all smaller, but all, but like all, but all smaller is a list of values minus minus the last index. So you don't have to have the last index. So now that you know all this, you're able to create different apps with the different types of selectors. Go into this documentation. Dash has great documentation. Look at um, the different filters, the different uh, ways they use uh, all and selector. In the dynamic callbacks, they use match example, and they'll give you an all smaller example. And then they use everything, or a lot of them, for the last uh, to do app right here. Um, where you can, like I showed you at the beginning, you can play around with this to-do list. Um, if you have any um, questions, go into also Plotly Forum, and the Plotly Forum right here is a forum where you can find a lot of uh, great Dash community members that um, uh, and, and Plotly community members that will help you if you have any problems along the way. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a lot from this video. If you did, don't forget to support, show your support, click the like button, subscribe to my channel below, and turn on your video not notifications for this channel so every week you can get a new video about Dash or Plotly or just different cool data visualization in Python so you can become an expert on analytic dashboards. Uh, keep practicing, enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.